A gang of troublemakers decides to bother a beekeeper by destroying some of his fake beehives and knocking over his honey storage shelf. They make fun of him, boldly taunting him while he hides. When they see his silhouette, they shoot at him without knowing he's a retired special ops. He skillfully takes them down one by one until only the leader is left. Seeing his friends defeated, the leader becomes scared and starts trembling. As he backs away, he accidentally bumps into the beekeeper who cuts off his fingers with a machine, causing him intense pain and making him scream. A few days ago, a beekeeper named Adam Clay, donned in a bee suit, was about to collect a beehive. During this, he encountered Eloise Parker, his elderly neighbor. Eloise, intrigued by the beehive, inquired about Clay's intentions. Despite being a private person, Clay respectfully conveyed that the matter concerned him and the bees. Eloise, displaying kindness as a neighbor, respected his privacy. Clay seizes the moment and extends his gratitude to her, acknowledging that she has been the only one taking care of him in recent years. Touched by his words, she appreciates the sentiment and invites him to dinner before his departure. Later, Clay proceeded to stun the bees for relocation. Simultaneously, Eloise, using her computer, received a message claiming technical issues. Unaware of the impending scam, she engaged with an individual named Boy, unknowingly opening herself up to hackers. Despite her limited computer knowledge, Eloise complied with Boy's instructions, fearing data loss. He discouraged her from contacting the bank, weaving a tale of potential job loss and family responsibilities. Touched by his story, Eloise disclosed her bank password containing funds for a program assisting underprivileged children in returning to school. Within seconds, her bank account was emptied and the scammers reveled in their ill-gotten gains. Eloise, gripped by frustration and despair, realized she had fallen victim to a scam. After finishing his work, Clay headed to Eloise's house. Upon arrival, he noticed smoke and a blaring smoke detector. Turning it off, he discovered Eloise dead with a gunshot wound. Verona, Eloise's daughter and a police officer, found Clay at the scene and subdued him. Clay, expressing regret, clarified that he was invited for dinner. Investigators considered suicide, but Verona insisted on interrogating Clay. While inspecting Eloise's belongings, Verona discovered her empty bank account on the laptop. The following day, Clay is proven innocent and is brought back to his house. Verona sees him, so she follows him to his workplace. She immediately apologizes to him, to which Clay responds and says that he understands her reaction. Verona then invites him to have coffee. While drinking coffee, Verona shares that her brother, who is in the army, died years ago. She also shares with him that her mother is an educator and the director of a charity committed to helping kids who can't afford to enter school. Lastly, Verona tells Clay the reason her mother committed suicide. She tells Clay that she found out her mother's bank account is zero. She also saw sites on her mother's laptop and shares the info with him. She says that she thinks that her mother got scammed, resulting in her despair. Clay gets moved by what she shared, so he immediately asks to leave, saying that he needs to attend to the bees. He goes straight to the beehive and gets a transmitter from it. He activates it and talks with an agent. She tells him that she thought that he already retired. Ignoring what she said, Clay asks her a request to trace the whereabouts of the scamming company Verona told him about. Later that day, he goes to the company with two gas tanks in both of his hands. The security stops him and tells him that it's private property. He gets blunt with them and tells them that he is going to burn the company down. Both of the guards try to pull out their guns, but Clay is too fast for them. He easily takes them down and proceeds inside. In the main office, he gets their attention and tells them to repeat after him, promising not to take advantage of others. The scammers laugh at him, thinking that he is just joking. Seeing that they are not taking him seriously, Clay hits one of the scammers with a telephone and punches him in the face multiple times. The scammers stop in fear and repeat after what he says. He then tells them to escape because he will be burning the place down. He continues to empty the gas tanks as he pours it all over their computers. Boy, whose real identity is Garnett, appears in the scene with a couple of guards. He angrily confronts Clay and orders the guards to subdue him. However, Clay is too good. He manages to beat all of them one by one without using a single gun. He then gives Garnett a chance to escape, saying that the bombs he installed will explode once a supposed victim calls them. Clay leaves in time before a call connects and the whole building explodes. Right after the incident, Garnett informs his boss, Derek Danforth, who gets furious from the bad news. He goes straight to Wallace Westwild, who is a high-ranking official in the CIA. He tells him about what happened, lying that a friend of his got his call center company burned. He tries to convince him to work for him and trace the culprit, but he refuses to use his power. Later that day, Verona gets a call from her partner Wiley, who informs her about the incident with relevance to her mother's case. She goes to the crime scene and sees the whole building burned down. Meanwhile, Garnett and some of his men seek revenge. They go to Clay's bee farm, destroy some of his beehives, and bring down a cabinet full of honey. Equipped with guns, Garnett arrogantly calls for Clay as they search for him. They see his silhouette and shoot at it. Unaware, he sneaks behind one of them and surrounds his neck with chains. One by one, he kills Garnett's men, leaving him alone. He sees the fate of his men, so he shrinks in fear and bumps into Clay while walking backward. While begging for his life, Clay holds his hand and pushes it towards a machine that cuts through steel. All of his fingers in his right hand get detached from his hand. 
He screams in pain as Clay leaves him. Meanwhile, Verona gets heated with one of the employees in the scamming company. Wiley steps in and reminds her of the civil rights of the man, so she stops. After a while, Garnett drives away and struggles to call his boss because his fingers got cut. Derek, who is getting massaged at that time, thinks at first that Garnett has called him to report back that he has done a great job. However, Garnett apologizes and informs him that they failed to kill him. Derek asks him about his identity, but all Garnett knows is that he is a beekeeper and he stores honey. While reporting, Clay appears and punches him in the face. Garnett offers to give Clay money and crypto. Unfortunately for him, Clay does not want his money but his life. He ties up the man using a long seatbelt attached to his car. He starts the car, and Garnett gets pulled with it towards the lake. Clay then picks up Garnett's phone and threatens Derek that he will burn him down like what he did to his company and hangs up. Derek, worried that Clay is not an ordinary man, goes to Westwild. He lies about his business and tells him that it's a data mining company. Westwild sees all what Clay has done and immediately makes a conclusion. He tells Derek that throughout years of serving in the CIA, he knows for sure that Derek messed up with the wrong person. He adds that he is a drowning man because he disturbed the beekeeper. He also clears that he is just helping him because of his mother, who has done him a great favor. He just wants to keep her reputation, that is why he put up with the crimes Derek has done in the past. Derek tries to get back at him, so he tells him that he is just scared, making excuses. Surprisingly, Westwild admits that he is and says that Derek should be terrified as well. At the police department, Verona and Wiley discuss the cases pertaining to the call center frauds. Verona eagerly wants to make a follow-up investigation in order to take down their main headquarters. While she eagerly discusses the case, her partner Wiley pays little attention. They also try to get information about Clay but find none except his birth certificate. Suddenly, a call reaches Wiley, informing him that they have found Garnett's body. Meanwhile, the news about Clay reaches Jessica Danforth, the mother of Derek, the former CEO of the Danforth Enterprise. She reaches to Westwild, who is in debt to her. Jessica then tells Westwild to protect her son, Derek. Left with no choice, Westwild accepts what she wants and finally takes action. He immediately contacts Janet, a high-ranking official in the CIA. He informs her about the situation and asks for her aid to take down the beekeeper. On the other hand, Verona and Wiley come to the scene of the crime and see Garnett's corpse. While looking at his corpse, they notice that his right hand has all of its fingers cut off. After a while, Westwild contacts Janet again. Confused, Janet asks why Clay, who is a former special ops known as the beekeeper, became a problem. She tells Westwild to calm down and rest assured because she already contacted the current beekeepers to take care of him. Still anxious and terrified, Westwild tells her that the present beekeepers are far from what the original beekeepers used to be. She insists and contacts one of them to terminate Clay. While Clay is putting gas, a car crashes behind him. A woman with an M4A1 shoots at his car mercilessly. However, when she checks inside the car, she finds no one. She searches for him in the gas station but points at the wrong person. She sees a police car, about to respond, so she rains bullets at the police mobile and ends up killing the police. Clay sees the opportunity and seizes it, he attacks her with a gas pump nozzle. She tries to attack him with a knife, but Clay is too good for her. When he pulls out her reserve pistol, Clay disappears from her sight. She gets furious, so she rides at the back of her truck and uses the Gatling gun. She fires aimlessly and recklessly. Clay calmly goes back to his car and gets a jar of honey. He throws it hard at her face, to the point that she gets knocked out. It only takes Clay a jar of honey to take down the woman. He lights up a lighter and throws it to the woman. She screams in agony as she tries to crawl to get the fire extinguished. Clay comes to her burning corpse and cuts her finger. Afterward, Westwild receives a call from Janet who informs him that the problem is not yet solved. Westwild states that it's just obvious. However, one of the agents supporting them with intel, Vicky, will now remain neutral. Janet then tells her that he is on his own from now on. Hearing this, he gets furious and pressured at the same time. The next day, Verona and Wiley go to another crime scene done by Clay. They find a Gatling gun used by the beekeeper woman and a book about bees. Meanwhile, Westwild resorts to another way of taking Clay down. He holds a meeting with former SEAL team and army rangers. He then proceeds to tell them about the secret program, beekeepers, a mechanism out of the system with just one mission, to keep the nation safe. The beekeepers are given all the resources they need and power to act on their own judgment. They operate in secret, having their identities confidential. He then proceeds to flash Clay's information on the screen. Lastly, Westwild briefs them that beekeepers try not to stand out so they should expect surprise attacks. One of them says that he is just like them. However, Westwild strongly disagrees and says that they are nowhere near the beekeepers. But if they will fight him as a group, they might stand a chance. At the police department, Verona reads the book about bees, which states that there are certain bees called queen bee slayers who will kill their queen if they see that their offspring is incompetent. While Verona is discussing bees, they receive a call informing them that Deputy Director Prig would like to talk to them. All the while, Clay goes to their old headquarters and uses the finger he cut to enter. Going back, Verona and Wiley finally meet with Prig. 
During their meeting, Verona briefs them about Clay, goes straight to the point, and tells that his next target will be Ninth Star United, another call center with the same function as before. Eventually, Prig acknowledges her request, approving her need for a SWAT team, surveillance, and analysts. The director of the next fraud call center is Rico Anzalone, another arrogant scammer. The information about Ninth Star United circulates, and the FBI, with a mission to raid the building and arrest Clay, gets blocked by the group of mercenaries Westwild hired. The mercenaries go inside attempting to shut down the scammers and find Clay. Rico then talks with their leader and brings the leader of the mercenaries to the office. Meanwhile, outside, Clay tries to inform the FBI about another entrance at the back and cooperate with them. However, the leader, thinking that he is just a civilian, orders his subordinates to detain him. Clay suddenly breaks his hand. The FBI surrounding him full of heavy armor tries to subdue him, but Clay is a monster so he takes them all down simultaneously. He takes one of them as a hostage so they cease fire. Inside the office, Rico mocks the leader and contacts Derek. When Derek answers the call, he reprimands the man and tells him that Westwild is his subordinate. When they are about to leave to set a perimeter outside, Clay appears in the midst of the scammers and causes a ruckus. The mercenaries see him so they attempt to kill him by raining bullets. Clay escapes and attacks some of them from above, he ambushes the remaining mercenaries and kills three of them by controlling the aim of their leader. The two get in a showdown where Clay finishes him off with the use of a fire extinguisher. Verona and the SWAT team arrive while Clay sets up a trap. The last wave of the mercenaries tries to shoot him down, but he baits them into the elevator and finishes them all with a trap. Afterwards, he goes straight to Rico and interrogates him by using a stapler. He tries to squeeze information out of him by torturing him with the use of a stapler. Eventually, Rico confesses and shows him a picture of Derek, saying that he is untouchable. Clay realizes that he is the son of a very powerful and influential person. However, beekeepers are trained to act on their own volition, so Clay is not swayed by any means. He tells that there is no such person as untouchable. Like a queen slayer, he will kill the queen if its offspring is proven to be defective. Verona eventually arrives, so he escapes right away. Wily, separated from the team, gets his ass kicked when Clay ambushed him. He begs to get his life spared, saying that he has four kids. Clay disarms his gun and leaves. While investigating the place, Verona and Wiley get shocked when they see a laptop with Derek on it. At an expensive hotel, Westwild receives another call informing him that all of his mercenaries are dead. He excuses himself and tells Derek that it's the time they asked Jessica to help them. A shocking turn of events emerges when Jessica answers the call of her son and is revealed to be the President of the United States of America. Meanwhile, Verona and Wiley report back to Prig and inform him about seeing Derek Danforth. Verona adds that Jessica Danforth gets her reputation tarnished when they found out that the campaign funds came from his son's company. Prig gets stressed out with the report and tells them not to tell anyone about the classified information. Verona also adds that he thinks that Clay's next target is the president. The following day, the two partners then proceed to the Danforth estate. At the estate, a bunch of private police are roaming around equipped with heavy weapons. Inside a room, Derek, Westwild, and Lazarus. Lazarus is a man hired to protect them, he gets hired because he managed to kill a beekeeper before. Derek continues to be arrogant, Lazarus hears this and tells him that he only got lucky and shows his steel right leg to him. After a few moments, the president arrives at the estate. Clay takes actions as well, so he comes from the sewers. He brilliantly times up and gets out of the manhole when a vehicle is above him. He hides below it, attempting to sneak inside. The security gets dire, so every part of the vehicles entering the estate gets checked. When an agent checks below the vehicle, Clay manages to silence him and disguises as a secret service agent. At the estate room, while Derek is hitting some coke, his mother arrives and the two talk. Unaware of her son's deeds, she checks on him and reassures him that she will take care of him. Meanwhile, Clay continues to move. He places bombs in different cars and changes his outfit. Inside the estate, a party is held, so he blends with them. At the party, Verona and Wiley see Prig talking with the president. Jessica, alarmed by the situation, brings Derek and Prig into a room. Prig then begins to ask multiple questions to Derek about his relation with the groups associated with the scam. While they are in an interrogation, Verona spots Clay. She reports to the security right away and follows him. However, she follows the wrong guy. Eventually, Lazarus and Verona manage to catch him. Little did they know, Clay has a plan in his mind. He gets on his knees and has his hand on his head. When Verona is about to arrest him, Lazarus points a gun at him and attempts to execute him once and for all. Westwild looks at him and signals to execute Clay. Verona sees what he is about to do, so she tries to stop him. However, he cannot be stopped so when he is about to pull the trigger. Clay detonates the bomb setup and stuns them in shock. He immediately steals the pistol from Lazarus' hand and shoots him in the mouth. He swiftly takes down the others and escapes. Verona and Wiley get shocked, so they did not manage to act. Lazarus, with a bullet in his mouth, is still alive. Inside the estate room, it is revealed that Jessica does not have any idea about the call center scams her son is running. Derek tries to reason his way out but his mother is very disappointed with him. Derek continues to confess that he has done what he did because of her even though Prig is there. 
Derek then tries to convince his mom to get on his side but fails. Jessica then makes a bold statement by saying that she will tell the truth to all even if it costs everything she has worked hard for. Meanwhile, like a madman, untouchable and ferocious, Clay takes down multiple enemies and goes forward. He is a killing machine, going upstairs full of guards without a sweat. When he reaches the room upstairs, Lazarus ambushes him and tries to overpower him by strength. The two exchange blows and Clay manages to stab him in the face. However, like a zombie, he withstands such an attack. During the fight, Lazarus manages to stab him in the abdomen. Clay pushes out the knife from him and somehow manages to get the knife to his advantage. He stabs him multiple times and steals his brass knuckles. Lazarus has great endurance, so he suffers multiple stabs and punches before he finally dies. Wiley and Verona see what happened upstairs and describe it as if a tornado passes by. Westwell then tries to convince him to change his mind like a conscience. Inside the room, Derek panics and picks up a gun from the cabinet. Influenced by Coke, he suddenly shoots Prig by accident. Clay breaches in and Verona with Wiley comes inside the room as well. Seeing this situation, Derek takes his own mother hostage. When Clay sees that Derek is about to pull the trigger and kill his mom, he shoots him in the head and saves the president. He then quickly jumps out the window to escape. Jessica sees her lifeless son and cries in pain like what any mother would do. At the end of the movie, Verona tails Clay as he escapes and stops him when she yells his name. Verona calls for Clay not to arrest him but express gratitude. She then slowly puts down her gun as a signal of respect. She stares at him as he jumps from the balcony and bids him farewell. Clay goes to the seashore and digs his scuba diving suit. Before the police even see him, he dives into the sea.